Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. Trying to take me home? Better make sure I am who you think. Accuse me of stealing I'll ruin your business and life. How my grandpa became the owner of a gas station slash garage. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Trying to take me home? Better make sure I am who you think. Unsure if this counts as pro-revenge, but I like to think so, on behalf of catcalling victims everywhere. Alright, so to understand the story, you have to understand a few things about me. I am a 19-year-old guy. Bye, with a boyfriend. I'm often told I have a very feminine body. I've posted in the femboy sub here, and they're with positive response, but this is a throwaway, and I'm not going to link anything for privacy reasons. I was out on a date a few weeks ago with my boyfriend, who I'll refer to as Alex, 20. For storytelling's sake, I'll go by Liam. We had just finished a movie date and decided to roam the dark streets of nightly NYC afterwards, just to chat and spend time together, as we don't live together. It's important to note that I was dressed up. Like a girl. I'm talking a crop top and skirt, plus some thigh highs. Come for me all you want, I like to feel pretty LMAO. I was waiting outside the convenience store, while Alex grabbed some snacks when a tall man, early 20s and dressed like your local dealer, walked up to me and tried to act sexy. I'll refer to him as Creep. Creep, what's up, baby? You know you shouldn't be out here so late, all alone. I said nothing. Creep, now, come on, babe. When a man speaks to you, you respond. How about we go back to my place? Now, here's something I haven't mentioned. I have a highish voice. Still masculine, but high enough to where, if I try, I can muster up a good female voice. So I do. Me, mmm, no. Not interested. Creep, come on, I don't bite. I just want to have a little fun. He got closer. I shook my head. At this point, Alex comes out with a bag of our snacks and notices the scene. Alex, everything all right, babe? Creep, babe? What, you're with this loser? Come on, let me show you what a real man can do for you. He put his hand on my hip. Alex started to walk forward, but I signaled for him to stay back. I had a plan. I put my hand on Creeps, then wrapped his arm around me and cuddled into his chest. He smelled like cigarettes, disappointed parents, and failed dreams. I look up at him, still in my girl voice. Oh, him. Don't mind him. If you want me. Then I switch to my normal voice. Then you can have me. Immediately he pushed me into Alex's arms and storms off, yelling obscenities mixed with a few homophobic slurs here and there, plus some transphobia tossed in for good measure. Me and Alex both go into hysterical laughter, nearly falling over each other. Once we come down, he looks to me. You're really an A asterisk asterisk hole. You gotta stop doing that to guys. He chuckled. Hey, they all approached me. Accuse me of stealing I'll ruin your business and life. This little story of revenge is about how I got even with a former boss and how I destroyed his and his business partner's life in the process. Many years ago I worked at an electronics repair store that will not be named. It was the only one in our smallish town so everyone came there. I worked my way up from lowly tech to store manager in roughly six months. A few months after I made store manager, one of the owners, who we will call Dennis, insisted on bringing his nephew in as a part-time employee. Don't get ahead of me Redditors. I initially didn't have any issues with the kid, he had come to the store on multiple occasions, and we would all sit around in the back and talk. So again, I had no issues with bringing him on part-time. For a good month or two, the kid who we will call Kevin busted his behind, did everything right, he could solder an HDMI port on a PS4 in minutes, one less thing for me to do. Profits for the store were skyrocketing and things seemed rather fine from where I was standing, 
I was due to make a fairly large bonus that year as long as the store kept turning the amount of money it was turning. I figured at this time, we could make Kevin our assistant manager, and I could go back to doing paperwork, inventory orders and such and leave the running of things to him. Well, mistakes were definitely made. I had a bad habit of writing down my login pin because Dennis and his business partner Jay were idiots and wanted the pin to be 9347893247349 digits long. These pins were required to access everything from sales data to the cash register and more. Anyway, around the time that I was turning over the majority of stuff to Kevin to do, I also started taking classes at the local university, so again, me being the idiot that I was would leave to go to class before coming back and finishing my shift. Dennis and Jay were fine with this as long as I left someone competent in charge. Fast forward to the end of the month when accounts receivable numbers were run. And wouldn't you know it, we were short. By thousands that month. I discussed everything with Dennis and Jay, and we assumed it was a computer glitch. There was no way after almost a year of working there that the numbers were off. I had never had this happen before. The next month we were once again off. It was around this time that Dennis and Jay came to me and started accusing me of stealing from them. They pointed out all of the days that the numbers didn't match up and saw that I was always closing that night. When I tried to explain to them that I was in class on those days when the money came up missing and suggested that they look at Kevin, Dennis blew his top. He said how dare I accuse his nephew of anything, that it was my pin used to access the register, etc. Needless to say, I was fired, luckily they didn't call the cop because in Jay's words, I had made them a boatload of money. Plan A couple of years had passed since I was working there, I graduated college with a degree in business, and had moved on with my life, or so I thought. One night while I was out at the store, I heard from behind me yo thief, as I turn around I see Kevin and Dennis with a SHT eating grin on their faces. I shrug it off and walk away continuing to hear their childish taunts. While in my car, I began to formulate a plan. I was going to crush these mother efkers no matter how long it took. It took me two months of planning but finally I figured that I would use my social engineering skills and my business savvy to completely crash their business. I broke the HDMI port on my PS4 on purpose and took it in to have it fixed. Kevin and a girl that had started there a few weeks earlier were the only two working. Kevin, hey welcome to such and such, oh, it's you thief, what can I help you with? Me, first off you can stop calling me that, you and I both know it's bullshit. Kevin, sorry dude, Dennis told me to call you that. I'm sorry how everything went down. What can I help you with? Me, my HDMI port broke, do you guys still repair them? Kevin, yeah we still repair them, it's $115. Me, damn you guys went up in price? Good on you, so, how's everything been since I left? Kevin, you mean since you were fired for stealing? Me, yeah, whatever, we both know that's bullshit. I knew Kevin was trying to impress the girl, but didn't care at that minute. We'll come back to her. As I glanced around I saw that they had added some new things to the store, including Otterbox cases and such. Me, whoa, that's new. How did you guys manage to get in with Otterbox? Kevin, oh we didn't, they kept turning us down, so I found a Chinese distro. We get them for $5 and sell them for $30. Me thinking to myself, this dude loves to blab, I need him to keep it up. Me, so, how much have the prices gone up on other things? Kevin, oh? Quite a bit actually, you thought you were turning this store a profit, let me show you something. He showed me their new price list which was insane on the pricing and also a big mistake. Revenge is mine. I never believed in ripping anyone off, so I always convinced Dennis and Jay our pricing was fair. And that they didn't need to charge a lot for repairs. Since they were the only game in town they had everyone by the balls. After the work was finished I said goodbye and made sure to wave to the girl as I walked out. This is when my plan really went into motion, I had everything I needed to crush these mother f -curs. All except a building, 
The next day, I looked around for a location to begin to dismantle their monopolistic hold on the town. As luck would have it a location right across the street from their store was coming up for rent. I quickly signed the lease and began to distribute flyers letting the town know about our coming grand opening on the flyer I was offering 90% off the first repair, basically I was doing the work for free just all they had to do was pay the part price. Opening day comes and I have 60 people there to get repairs. Ranging from iPhone screen repairs, to simple PC tune-ups. This went on like this for months, sure I was taking a loss on the building rent, but this being a smallish town, the rent was easily manageable. After things started to settle down and business became steady, Dennis and Jay started losing massive business due to the new guy in town. They still hadn't realized it was me, Jane walked in as I was closing up shop, Jane if you recall was the girl who worked for Dennis that Kevin was trying to hit on, apparently she had been let go that night and was looking for another job. I immediately gave her the job because she knew her SHT. I asked her what all happened over there, and she said everything has gone to SHT and that the store has been losing tens of thousands since this place opened and that she would have left sooner if she didn't need the job. Kevin apparently really liked her and couldn't keep his hands to himself. A month after Jane came in, Dennis and Jay came in to see who their new comp was. As they walked in I greeted them as I do any customer. Me, me welcome to new guy's electronic repair, how can I help you? Dennis, does the owner know he hired a thief? Me, oh, I'm sure he knows you're full of SHT on that one. Dennis, Get me your manager you piece of SHT thief. Me, sir, I am the manager, how can I help you? Dennis, well is the owner here, me, yes sir he is. Dennis, good then go get him, so that I can tell him what a thief you are. Me, sure, one minute. I walk into the back and start talking to Jane, we both enjoy a laugh, because she overheard this dude. I walk out of the back and look at Dennis. Me. How can I help you? Dennis, you can stop playing games and get me your owner. Me, pointing to the sign behind me, yeah that's me, how can I help you? Dennis, you're the one that has been taking all of our business. Me, yep, you called me a thief, when you knew all along it was your piece of SHT nephew that was stealing from you. I made it my life's mission to destroy you, the day you and Kevin called me a thief in the store. You couldn't leave well enough alone. Jay, you mean to tell me that this is his fault? Looking at. Dennis. Me, yep, and yours as well, you had a chance to stick up for me and didn't. If I can't assist you gentlemen with a repair or anything, I kindly ask that you leave my store. Dennis, fuck you, you haven't heard the end of us. This quite literally cracked me up, the dude trying to talk tough. I laughed as they stormed out of my store. About this time, Jane came from out of the back area and dropped her phone. I bent down to pick it up and noticed that it was the fake otter boxes that the other store was selling. I made an anonymous tip to Otterbox regarding them selling counterfeits. Boy, let me tell you, Otterbox doesn't fking play. Within a week the other store was raided, Kevin, Dennis and Jay were all arrested for selling counterfeit items and were sued into bankruptcy. As for Jane and I, well, we just welcomed our first child into the world and have been married for a year and a half. If you're reading this Kevin Little F. King Thief, not only did I cost you and your uncle everything, but I also took your woman. How my grandpa became the owner of a gas station slash garage. My family immigrated America in the 1880s and settled in Nebraska. We were farmers for the first 80 years or so, but back in the 1960s my great-grandma decided she was going to sell the entire farm before she died and simply give her sons one-third of money for inheritance when she passed, she had three sons. In 1969 my great-grandma passed, and her three sons inherited the money she had earned from selling the farm. My grandpa decided he would basically let that money sit until after he retired from the military. In 1971 he deployed to Vietnam for his second and final deployment. At the end of his deployment he returned to Nebraska and retired after 22 years in the service. Now, he had an old Chevy truck at the time and was in the process of building a concrete business with the money he had gotten from his inheritance. 
Well during this time, his truck engine blew up. My grandpa was busy at the time, and he didn't want to fool with the truck cause he was busy. So he bought himself the engine he wanted to replace it with, which was an upgrade, and he went down to the only garage in town and asked them if they'd be willing to put the engine in the truck. They agreed on a price, and told him to come back in a week or so. A week later my grandpa comes back and picks up the truck, he admits he felt like a fool for not double checking the work, but assumed since this was the son of his friend that the son would do right by him. This was a small town. Well my grandpa opens up the concrete business, and he's busy, and it comes time for his first oil change. This is about four months after he got the truck back. He's doing the oil change and he notices that the engine he bought, isn't the engine in his truck. It's a smaller engine. This obviously pisses him off to high heaven as my grandma liked to say. So he storms on down to the garage and talks to shop, Earl was the owner. Earl comes out, and denies any wrongdoing. Says he did as he was told, and it shouldn't have taken him four months to bring the issue up. My grandpa tells Earl he needs to do what's right. Earl refuses. It's important to note, this is a small town. Written contracts and so forth really isn't a thing. Your worth is your word. My grandpa tells Earl he's going get him for this. Earl laughs and tells him to leave his shop. My grandpa goes down to the county and requests the record for who owns that gas station. Turns out it's an old family friend named Harold. My grandpa stops by Harold's house and starts inquiring about the business deal Harold has with Earl. Harold says well Earl rents the gas station slash garage from him. My grandpa asks Harold how is everything going and Harold confides that Earl hasn't paid his rent in two months. My grandpa asks do you have a written lease with Earl, to which Harold goes nah, I sure don't my grandpa then asks what if I bought the gas station slash garage from you. Harold isn't completely on board with the idea, but my grandpa makes a strong point. Earl isn't paying his rent, Harold doesn't seem like he has much interest in being a landlord anymore, and my grandpa has the cash to buy the place outright. Harold sensing something is up, asks my grandpa did Earl do something to you? You seem awfully interested in this garage, ain't you busy with the that concrete business of yours, and my grandpa fills Harold in on the story. My grandpa also mentions that he has a son, my father, who needs something to do, and he'd be happy to buy the whole building from Harold for a fair price, and what happens after that is his business. Also it's important to note, when Harold decided to rent this business to Earl, in that deal went all the equipment and tools that Harold had acquired over the years so those belonged to the building. Harold and my grandpa came to a number that they both agreed on. A few days later my grandpa paid Harold in cash, in full for the business. The paperwork is done and my grandpa is now the proud owner of a gas station and mechanic shop. Now my grandpa senses that Earl ain't going be to pleased when my grandpa fires Earl so for extra good measure my grandpa calls up the local sheriff who is a high school friend and asks the sheriff to come with him to break the news to Earl. So my grandpa and the sheriff go down to Earl's now former business, and they walk in and before my grandpa can even say hello Earl says now I told you, I didn't cheat you my grandpa smiles and says I'm not here about my truck, I'm here to fire you. Earl with a look of confusion on his face asks you can't fire me. I own this business my grandpa shows him the title and says I'm now the owner of this building to which Earl fires back, but I got a deal with Harold and the sheriff speaks up you do. Do you have a lease? Well no Earl says to which the sheriff smiles and says in that case, you're going need to take your stuff and leave Earl is fuming pissed, grabs his toolbox and storms out. My grandpa ended up hiring the mechanic that would occasionally work on his trucks at his concrete business, he had my aunt and grandma run the gas station full time and my dad would work there after school. We owned that garage for 25 years before my grandpa sold it to someone else, comma.